As game developers, the term AI is nothing new to us. We've been working with game AIs for the longest time ever, basically. But the last year, the term AI has really changed a lot, as you may have probably heard if you've been on the internet recently, with things like Midjourney for image generation or ChatGPT as a big one, and now all of the subsequent followers, such as AutoGPT and such, really taking over the world and offering a lot of different use cases for the large language models and for image generation and stuff like that. And honestly, this isn't the first time I've been thinking about making a video about AI. We've actually got a scrapped idea where we were going to use AI to write code for us, write bug fixes for our game. But there were still quite a lot of issues with that, so we ended up scrapping it because it wasn't really that smart. But recently I've been doing more and more with AI again, and I figured that in this video I would just sit down and explain a bit what is our use case for AI within Byte Me Games, what are we doing with it, and what are some things that you could do with it as well. And I'll also cover a bit more about uh, the what ifs. So follow along and I'll explain a bit more what we can do with AI as game developers. I'm bringing you this video, by the way, from the top of Mount Tempo here in Osaka. It's a huge climb, if I say so myself, at four meters and 53 centimeters of height. I think it's the second lowest mountain. That's the fun fact for the video. But I want to talk about image generation, as that is the one that we are using the most. So this is something like a mid-journey, or what we use a lot as well is the derivative or the subset of mid-journey, Niji journey. And we got a license for it. Why? Because we don't have any artists here at Bite Me Games. And if you want to make a good game, you do need a lot of art, especially concept art, for example. So you have an idea of once you're going to model something, how should it look or to sell your vision to someone else, really, whether that's a publisher or some funding or maybe even your players. And that lack of a concept artist or an artist in general is a very big problem for us because what we had to do for Forge Industry is I had to just go and look on the internet, look on Pinterest and such if I wanted to get some inspiration, for example, for a Forge. But it's very hard, first of all, to find something on the internet because you need to have the exact right word groups. And second of all, even if you find something, maybe there's not that many examples or it's not exactly what you are looking for. So that's where something like a mid-journey comes in. We got a license because we were starting to work on our second game and we needed to make some pitch decks and we wanted some good concept art, mostly for internal use, however. I'll get back to that one later. So honestly, it's amazing. It's beyond what I could have hoped. I had dabbled around with it a while back when it was still running on the V4, but now it has V5 of mid-journey and it's really insane. I'll have a bunch of examples for not the game that we're going to be making next, but a scrapped game. So I don't spoil too much about our next game. And the level of detail that I can describe a scene and then one minute later get a full or get four full images really that I can then, if I'm like, oh, this is not exactly what I want, I can just go edit the prompt and it will spit out four new images again. And it's a workflow that is honestly so fast. If I had to go to an actual artist, he would be busy for it at least an hour mostly like multiple hours if you wanted to do the colors and everything right. And it also just makes it a lot more easy for us to have examples to show to each other. If I want to sell my vision to someone else of the team, I can just generate an image or generate five images and just send them off in Discord and the rest of the team immediately knows what I'm talking about. Now, should you use Midjourney or Niji Journey? Honestly, it depends. We actually use Niji Journey a lot more as it's trained on anime, really. Anime pictures. So it has more of that hand-drawn concept art style, which I like more to give my vision. I don't like how Midjourney can have those hyper-realistic 3D pictures that look like lifelike. It's cool, don't get me wrong, but it's not what you want as a piece of concept art, really. You want something that is quite simple and quite easy to understand without too much detail. It allows you as well, if there's not too much detail, to fill in the gaps with your mind still, but know where you're going to. Of course, we do also use Midjourney. Honestly, sometimes if I'm not happy with a prompt from Niji Journey, I just run the same through Midjourney, tweak it a bit, and I've always had a good result. Now, looking at it from a purely financial reason, something like Midjourney or Niji Journey has saved us a lot of money already because we pay 30 US dollars a month for the license and it gives us com commercial rights and whatever. But if you have the promo art, for example, for Forge Industry, it's the only piece that we've ever had commissioned. We commissioned that one through Fiverr and it was honestly really cheap. Still, I think for the quality we got in the communication was about 120 euros. But that's already four months 
of AI generation. That's a immense amount of concept art that you can get from that. And that just makes it a bit harder to justify having that on-call staff, especially if you want to have an artist in your studio. That's probably, that would cost us about 2,500 to 3,000 euros a month just in like their wages and stuff. Now, when it comes to large language models such as ChatGPT, Google's BART, or something like Microsoft's Bing, I do use them a bit, but I find them a bit less of a use case for me. But of course, that may just be because I'm not like having had enough hands-on experience with large language models for game development. I know, for example, that Jamie uses AI a lot in large language models to help him in programming. I don't program, so I don't really have that use case, but I think that is something to look out for if you are a game developer. But what I also really like about uh, large language models is how it can help you writing engaging content. So whether it's your Steam page description or it's your little pitch or anything, you can basically give in a short description of what you want and then be like, blow this out to like one full page of random stuff, which does make sense, honestly. Or if you have something that's much longer and you're like, please condense this to me, that's a use case I have. Also, I like to bounce ideas for certain mechanics actually with it off. I'm like, what do you think of this mechanic? What are some things that I should keep in mind, keep into consideration that players may or may not like? Because it knows all of these things. I don't know the full black magic behind how those models actually work, but it helps me a lot in just brainstorming more. Or when I'm stuck on something, ChatGPT is a great trigger for me because that's the one I use the most to just get those juices flowing again and to start working with something. Once I have that initial point that I can start from, then it's usually quite easy for me to write my own thoughts. It's just getting that initial starting point, that seed of, oh, I want to talk about what should I talk about for my game? Well, AI can help with that. Now, you hear me talk a lot about the good things that we've gotten through AI, how it's saving us time and money, but you're probably thinking, well, Marnix, what's the catch? And maybe if you've been on the internet, you've heard about it before, there are actually two main catches. The first one is copyright for you. So for you as the developer who's using the model, because none of the images that you generate through something like a mid journey or a Niji journey can be copyrighted. So if I make the concept art for a game and I decide to make a poster, for example, that you can buy, well, legally, there's nothing that I can do to stop anyone from just downloading the PNG of our poster and reselling it for cheaper. There's no copyright because it's not human made. That's actually one of the big catches in order for work to be copyrighted. An actual human must have made it and just making a prompt does not count as it. There's actually been some lawsuits already regarding it. So I would never use it as your main promo material. So how we use it would invite me and how we're gonna keep using it would invite me is purely for internal concept. For if I quickly wanna get some ideas for a new building or a new model, or I wanna share a vision with the rest of the team, I'll go into mid journey and I'll get up a prompt and get a new piece of art. But for something like our promo art, we're just going to keep working with real people. And of course, the question is, am I making sure that there is some artist right now who could have been working for us who's being starved right now? Well, I'd like to think not. That's what I think when I try to fall asleep, at least, because we wouldn't have the funds anyway to full time hire an artist. So this is just our middle ground until we actually have it further developed. Now, there's a second, more controversial and bigger topic, even if you ask me, and that is the part of ethics. This art has been stolen, basically. None of the people who made the training data knew they were doing it. They just were scraping things like ArtStation and such. You had the big no stop AI arts things as well on stuff like DeviantArt, ArtStation. And it's a very double feeling, of course. And I don't want to go too deep into the ethics, but I do want to just give one shout out to one part that does make me question sometimes is um, there was a piece of art I was generating and there was an actual signature of some guy who made the art in it. Of course, I couldn't read it. It was very illegible because it was still AI generated from a whole bunch of images. But that was like one moment where I had to stop and be like, okay, how morally correct is what I'm doing here right now? And honestly, I don't think this alone is a reason for me to stop using AI. Probably every artist out there right now is hating me, but I'm just sharing with you the art, the harsh truth that this is the best option for us. And for now, it's going to be like that. Do we need a more sustainable way of training data and stuff like that? Definitely. But we don't really have one of those yet. So I also don't want to have a lot of what ifs, because if we don't use AI, someone else will be using AI and they'll be getting a leg up for us in the game development space or in whatever space. 
and then we would just lose out for a moral reason. And the question is, of course, how much do you value those morals? Man, that was a downer way to end the video. I hope still that you've learned a bit more. This wasn't really a tutorial. It was more about us sharing our experiences here at Bite Me Games with AI. Let me know in the comments down below, have you considered using AI or maybe you're using AI as well? Maybe you've got some cool tips and tricks that I haven't even thought about, for example, when using large language models. I would love to hear from you guys about that. And apart from that, if you're new here, we are a game development studio, as you may have guessed, and we make two videos every week talking about game developer related topics such as this. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe and leave us a like as it really helps us out. And that's all I really have to say. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.